What if you woke up one morning, unable to move with a demon-like creature sitting on your chest, restricting your breathing? For around 7% of the human population, this isn't just some what if scenario, but instead a legitimate possibility. It's what's known as sleep paralysis. And in today's video, with the help of the cadavers here in the lab, we're gonna investigate exactly what's happening to the body during this waking nightmare. It's gonna be petrifying. Let's do this. Sleep paralysis belongs to the category of sleep disorders known as parasomnias, which also includes sleepwalking, nocturnal seizures, and night terrors, to name just a few. Specifically, sleep paralysis is one of many rapid eye movement, or REM parasomnias. REM sleep is where dreaming occurs, and to no surprise, the eyes move quickly and randomly beneath the eyelids. So normally during REM sleep, the skeletal muscles of the body become atonic, meaning they're unable to move. And now, this is gonna make complete sense to you because this prevents you from, I don't know, acting out your dreams and possibly injuring yourself or Others, as you drift into REM sleep, neurotransmitters such as acetylcholine, GABA, glycine, norepinephrine, and serotonin are released and suppressed in the basal forebrain, brainstem, and spinal cord, which you can see the brainstem transitioning into right here. And this results in a brain state that resembles wakefulness at certain times and deeper sleep at other times. By altering the activity of the upper motor neurons, which are going to be located up in the brainstem and the spinal cord, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine can't be released from the spinal nerves, which is what you see here, meaning that the muscles that these nerves are attached to just can't contract. If you're getting somewhere around seven hours or so of sleep per night, that means you're cycling in and out of a REM state four different times. Sleep paralysis typically occurs when you're transitioning out of a REM state. GABA and glycine are the primary neurotransmitters for muscle atonia, or paralysis, during REM. They hyperpolarize motor neurons, making it difficult for them to send signals to the muscles. When you transition out of REM sleep, GABA and glycine levels should decrease in the brain and spinal cord, allowing the muscles to work again. In sleep paralysis, the brain essentially transitions to a wakeful state, but GABA and glycine levels stay elevated in the central nervous system, meaning that the peripheral nervous system still isn't able to send signals to the muscles to contract, therefore the muscle atonia is still present. And it's at this point that things just get weird. I want to take a quick moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, Beam. This right here is a bag of Beam Dream Powder. Specifically, this is the Golden Milk Latte flavor, which happens to be my favorite flavor, although the white chocolate peppermint is a close second in my book. Beam is on a mission to make the experience of sleep easier, healthier, and more enjoyable. Dream is a latte, or a cup of healthy hot cocoa, formulated to help you get your best night's sleep. It comes with a variety of ingredients and flavors customizable to your lifestyle. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, non-GMO, vegan, and keto-friendly. The supplements inside are magnesium, theanine, melatonin, and a broad-spectrum nano CBD, but they also have a non-CBD version as well. Now, I'm excited about this because I've been taking theanine for years now to help with my sleep experience, so to see it packaged alongside with a nice, warm latte is just awesome to see. Sleep quality has become an enormous priority in my life. If I don't have a great night's sleep, I'm a miserable person to be around. Creating content like this, borderline impossible on a poor night's sleep. Uh, parenting, extremely difficult. Look, you don't even wanna run into me at the grocery store if I've had a bad night's sleep. I just, I'm not a tolerable person to be around. But the opposite is also true. If I've had a great night's sleep, you know, I'm on my A game, right? I'm the best version of myself. And with Beam, that best version of myself is a regular thing now. My sleep with Beam has become absolutely incredible. If you're interested, go to shopbeam.com slash IOHA or scan the QR code to shop Beam's biggest sale and get up to 50% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. The discount is auto applied, so there's no code necessary. Only hemp-free dream flavors are eligible for international shipping. Again, that's up to 50% off. So go ahead and scan the QR code or click the link in the description below.
This middle ground between the dreaming and wakeful state is the perfect setting for hallucinations. Hypnagogic hallucinations occur as you're falling asleep, while hypnopompic hallucinations occur when waking up. They can be visual, auditory, or even tactile, meaning you can feel something that isn't really there. You don't need to have a sleep disorder to have these types of hallucinations. So for me personally, I have had many auditory hypnagogic hallucinations in my life. So I will hear like a really loud sound every once in a while as I'm drifting off to sleep, which always just scares me to no end. Like I will jump out of bed ready to fight as though like I'm some action hero only to find that the room is empty and I look paranoid. Being stressed overly tired, or taking certain medications have all been associated with hallucinations. While they're usually harmless, they can be extremely disturbing when part of a sleep disorder. With sleep paralysis, hypnopompic hallucinations are the most common, meaning the hallucinations occur most often when waking up. And interestingly, there's a strong cultural association with the specific hallucination itself. Here in the United States, you'll typically hear about a demon-like creature sitting on the chest of someone having a sleep paralysis episode, but in several Eastern and South Asian countries, the experience is described as being tied up or bound by a ghost or supernatural being. In New Finland, it's commonly described as old hag syndrome, which is where an old hag leaves her body at night and sits on the chest of her victims, which to me, out of context seems oddly specific, but regardless of the cultural interpretation, the common denominator cross-culturally is chest pressure, which makes perfect sense given the respiratory changes that occur during REM sleep. Breathing, just like brain activity, becomes more erratic during REM sleep. The number of breaths per minute can increase during REM when compared to non-REM sleep, but the volume of air going into the lungs can decrease during REM when compared to non-REM sleep. The muscle atonia can also affect the muscles of the throat or pharynx, which is what you see here. And this can lead to a partial obstruction of the airway. If you just kind of relax it right now, you can feel these muscles in here during a relaxed state somewhat collapse. When you combine these physiological events with dreamlike hallucinations, it's not that surprising that individuals describe a supernatural being attempting to press their chest into the floor. The silver lining though, if there is one, is that sleep paralysis events are typically short-lived with most just being a few seconds, maybe a couple minutes, but there have been many reports over the years of episodes lasting 20 minutes or longer, which would be utterly horrifying. But at the same time, even if it's just a few seconds, that would be a terrifying few seconds. It's important to understand that sleep paralysis is considered a sleeping disorder, meaning that if this happens to you, it's best to seek out medical help to try and determine what influenced it. Sleep paralysis is more common in those with pre-existing psychiatric disorders, sleep disorders such as narcolepsy, but they also have a higher incidence rate with college students and females. That treatment usually isn't too complex and involves making changes to lifestyle, sleeping habits, stress management, but Treatment can vary depending on the individual and may have a varying degree of success. While I've never personally experienced sleep paralysis, it has fascinated me since high school. I've known many people over the years who've had at least one episode, and there's just something uniquely terrifying about a supernatural creature just like showing up seemingly out of nowhere, sitting on your chest, looking you in the eyes, and crushing your chest as you watch helplessly. The human mind is fascinating. Thanks for watching everybody. As always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next video.